Previet. The economy of South Korea has witnessed a transformation rarely seen in many other parts of the world. And over the last 60 years, it has been the most transformative in the world. Once racked by external invasion and poverty, this Southeast Asian economy has been able to invent itself into a towering economy powered by innovation and invention. Little wonder why it is called the miracle of the Han River. In this documentary, we will tell you a tale of a small country that once was. A country that has been able to transform itself into a trillion dollar economy and the 12th largest in the world with a GDP of about $1.65 trillion as of 2019. So sit back, relax, and learn a thing or two about one of the most successful economies of the 21st century. Less than a century ago, South Korea was a small peninsula with a poverty-stricken economy that was at the mercy of China to the north and Japan to the east. For close to half a century, South Korea was basically a vassal state of Japan, as the Japanese ruled large swaths of the country. But following the defeat of the Japanese Imperial Army during the Second World War, they vacated the island, and for the first time in several decades, South Koreans were able to take full control of their destiny. But it wasn't plain sailing, though. The Republic of Korea, as it was known then, suffered significant losses in the Korean War, which was waged with its northern neighbors, North Korea. The war lasted from 1950 to 1953, and by the end of the conflict, the economy was in shambles. Its infrastructure was in complete ruins, and the economy was heavily dependent on U.S. aid. Rather than continue to wallow in poverty and misery, and continually depend on foreign aid, the leaders took the bulls by the horns and began to rebuild the economy from scratch. By adopting meticulous planning and protectionist policies, South Korea's leaders were able to transform the country into an innovative economy. Within three decades, the economy was so successful that it was admitted into the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, in 1996. From then on, there was no looking back as the country began to transform itself rapidly. Several of its industries grew at an astonishing rate to the shock of the rest of the world. Over time, the South Korean economy became a model other countries wanted to emulate. But what was the key to its success? Planners and policymakers invested heavily in innovation and research, and these translated into significant gains. Also, they enacted business-friendly policies to ease business transactions and to reduce the cost of doing business. These went a long way to stimulate small and large business growth, and also attracted foreign investors who saw the economy as an attractive proposition. Today, South Korea is classed as a high-income OECD country with a high standard of living by the World Bank. Several sectors have contributed to its growth, chief among them being the services and the industrial sector, with only a tiny part of its economy relying on the primary sector. To give you a clear idea of the industries that have influenced the economy and continue to influence the economy, let us take a look at the different industries and their contribution to the GDP. The agriculture industry used to be the mainstay of the economy for many years. During the division of the Korean Peninsula, agriculture contributed about 50% of the GDP. Once the economy began to develop, the government began to move away from agriculture as a major revenue earner. Today, it has drastically moved into large-scale industrialization. By 1980, agriculture contributed only 15% of GDP, and by the late 1980s, this had dropped to 10%. The percentage was below 5% by 1998, and today, agriculture only contributes less than 2% of the country's GDP. That's an astonishing 90% drop in less than six decades. Due to rising urbanization and increased labor cost, many people are moving away from agriculture, which has made South Korea become a net importer of food. The production sector, still active in the country, is highly reliant on government subsidies to survive. South Korea now imports grains, wheat, livestock, animal hides, flour, textiles, and leather goods from the U.S., 
China, Australia, the EU, and other Asian nations. Then we have the industrial economy, which is the second largest contributor to GDP. This sector has been years in the making, and today it employs about 25% of the entire labor force. The sectors driving the industrial economy are mining, construction, water and gas, electricity, and manufacturing. In fact, the manufacturing sector has been South Korea's engine of progress starting since the 1980s. The industry contributes about 34% of GDP, and of this percentage, manufacturing alone provides a massive 28% as of 2021. Besides manufacturing, the mining sector is also doing quite well. Mining has steadily increased in recent years, even though the country has a limited supply of minerals and metals. Today, South Korea produces copper, gold, zinc, ore, lewd, magnesite, silver, barite, steel, tungsten, and many other precious metals. Despite its impressive mining capacity, local production has not been able to satisfy growing demand, so the country continues to import much of the metal it needs. A special part of the industrial sector is the electronics sector. If you ask the average person to mention one South Korean company that comes to mind, they will likely mention Samsung, and they will be right. Samsung is one of the biggest electronic manufacturers in the world, with a very strong brand. But South Korea is not only about Samsung, as there are several other brands that have managed to capture a significant market share both at home and abroad. One of such companies is LG Electronics. The country is also a hub for semiconductors, with Hynix being one of the largest producers in the world. Such is the technological capacity of South Korea that it has become a global supplier of automobiles, electronics, smartphones, chemicals, steel, and of course, semiconductors. The semiconductors market has become not just a money spinner, but also a political tool of influence. Today, the world has become hugely reliant on computers, smartphones, and electronic gadgets, and life will not remain as we know it without these gadgets. While South Korea may not have the largest or strongest military, it still has been able to influence global politics to a certain extent due to its influence over the supply chain of semiconductors. The automotive industry is also highly advanced with a significant production capacity. Some of the famous car brands you know are manufactured in Korea, such as Renault, Kia, and the flagship brand, Hyundai. The government has also been able to make the country an industry leader in the mobile phone and information technology market. It also has a big shipbuilding industry that can compete with any other shipbuilding industry in the world. Next to the industrial sector is the services sector, which has also been a significant contributor to GDP. Back in 1965, the services sector contributed only 39% to the GDP of the country. But by 1980, it had grown to reach 57%, and this percentage has been maintained to date. South Korea has the inviolable record of being one of the few countries in the world to have a vibrant services sector that is the largest contributor to national GDP. Despite its huge success, experts say that the sector is yet to reach its full potential, which is positively frightening when you consider just how advanced it currently is. This general consensus among economists is that the sector will continue to grow and absorb more workers, which will translate to an increase in productivity. Today, as it stands, the sector employs more than 70% of the labor force, which is behind Japan at 72%, the US at 79%, and the UK at 81%. However, when you consider that these countries have a head start by as much as a century or more, you will understand just how far South Korea has come in such a short time. Sectors within this sector that are driving the economy and show signs of expanding even more are tourism, education, medical sector, and most importantly, entertainment. Now, when it comes to entertainment, no other industry captures the mind of the world like Korea's entertainment industry. Its K-pop music scene has been greatly influenced by Western culture, 
and has influenced the country's youth more than any other phenomenon, with several stars and groups making a name for themselves both home and abroad. Then there is the enigma that is the South Korean movie industry. South Korean movies are not new to the rest of the world, especially in the US, with a significant South Korean population. However, the last decade has witnessed a meteoric rise of the country's cinematography industry. The world was shocked when Parasite, a South Korean production, took home four Oscars, including the Best Picture Award. It became the first non-English film to win big in the history of the Oscars, and Bong Joon-ho, the film's director, became a household name. Before Parasite, South Korea gave us Grand Old Boy in 2003, and Burning, which won a total of 101 awards. Burning captured the imagination of the West, and the industry has not looked back since then. South Korean movies are known for their violent and revenge scenes, laced with sexual passion, which has captured the minds of fans worldwide. Over the last century, the industry has reinvented itself, starting from its first ever cinematic presentation titled Righteous Revenge, released in 1919 and directed by Do Son Kim. Despite the success of the film, the industry stagnated until the 1940s after the liberation from Japan. While Parasite continues to be a reference point in Korean cinema, the new flick that is driving fans crazy is the Netflix series Squid Games. This series has become a phenomenon, having broken the record held by British flick Bridgerton to become the most viewed series on the platform, with 111 million views in the first four weeks. Squid Game is a mixture of extreme violence and social allegory with participants pitched against each other in a contest. The winner walks away with 33 million euros, while the loser is killed. Since its release, it has become a viral hit and has brought South Korean cinema to the forefront. Such has been its impact that Netflix recently announced that it was going to invest about $500 million into South Korean films in 2021 alone. And as you know, this investment, like the others coming through, will go a long way to boost the industry and the economy even more. In addition, more jobs will be created, and the country will earn more foreign revenue in the coming years. South Korea's economy has been a wonder and has become a reference point at economic institutes and colleges. As the economy continues to transform itself, South Korea is in a race against time to become the most industrialized nation on Earth. Judging by their achievements over the last half a century, it will be foolhardy to bet against them.